The most important game mode in Lord of the Rings Heroes Middle Earth, in my opinion, is Arena. It is the only PvP mode in the game right now and is the major source of all your gems, the premium currency in this game. And in this video, we're talking about the best early game arena squads that you can build. And if you're ready for that, Valley Club, you know it's you. Find that like button and let's go smash it. Valley Club. Hello there, Valley Club. Welcome back to the Valley Snap Channel. I'm Valley Flying. Hope you're having a great day, and I hope you're having fun playing Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle Earth. In this video, we're talking about the best arena squads that you could build for the early game, and uh, we are revealing all of that. We got some gameplay as well. We're going to take my arena squad into the arena and take do some battles as well. But if it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button for more great Lord of the Rings content as well as Marvel Snap content. We're covering currently both games on this channel. I'm probably going to lean into whatever you guys enjoy more and covering that a little more. But let's get right into the game and talk about why arena is important. Well, uh, like I said in the beginning, it is a major source of gems. And uh, this rank here, silver one, where we're currently at, 74 gems that you're getting per day. And you're gonna need a lot of gems if you're doing your campaign refreshes and getting that extra energy to build your characters. The higher you go, the better it is. You're getting more and more gems per day, uh, which is which is giving you a huge head start. So you definitely wanna get out of these bronze ranks and get into these silver ranks as soon as possible. Let's talk about how to do that. Some great characters that you can start to build. Now we're gonna go and take a look at my arena squad in just a little bit. But early on is you get a few characters for free that are gonna be very good in arena. The first character you're gonna get for free that you're gonna be able to use is Strider. Now, the good thing about Strider, you don't really need to farm it because as you're doing your daily activities, you're going to get five more Strider shards per day. So this is a character that you're naturally build over time. Uh, and one mistake that I did, I really leaned into this leadership ability and leaned into this world of Rivendell squads and lean into the hobbits. The hobbits are not very good. You're going to need them early on just because you don't have many characters early on. But as you start to all unlock some other characters and you can start to farm some other characters, you're probably going to drop the hobbit. And if we take a look at Strider's ability, he has a decent basic here. And if the target has Bane, he's going to do a little more damage. And again, Bane is your negative effects that's on the enemies. He has a burning effect here and he has a big AoE attack. So very, very good initial hero that you get. Another hero that you're going to get early on is Lady Eowyn. You're going to get this character for free, and she has a great leadership ability. She is a uh, leadership. She has that synergy with a Rohan character. So all Rohan squads members are going to gain more crit chance from assists and counterattack. She has a decent basic here, giving a stack of defense up. She has might, which is kind of like offense up if you're playing Marvel Strike Force. Offense up two random enemies and then calling someone else to assist. She also has this move, which is going to cleanse some negative effects or banes from your characters. Inflict Disabled, which is like an ability block on the target. So very, very strong character here. And she has the leadership ability that synergizes with the rest of the Rohan characters who are very easy to farm later on. Aelfane is one of the best light side tanks in the game, at least early game tanks in a game. And uh, I'm still using him in Arena. He has a couple different moves here. There's an okay basic that has Expose on each turn, which is kind of like defense down in Marvel Strike Force. Uh, you have this move here, the special, which gives him Provoke, which is sort of like a taunt. Uh, this does fall off after so often, but it also gives, not just the taunt, gives turn meter to all your squad members. This is a great AoE because not only will it deal damage, but it's going to give counterattack to himself and the rest of his allies. And then just this uh, ability, his passive ability, just makes him a little stronger. So those are a couple of great characters that you're going to use early on. Now, another character that you can get very early on in the arena store is Eomir. And I think you unlock him for free just by doing some uh, missions there. But this is a great character. He is a Rohan character as well. So synergizes with Eowyn uh, and Eothane. And he, he has a great summon here. He has a summon for this Rohan attacker. Very weak Rohan attacker, though. But it is nice to have more characters on the field. Now, in Marvel Strike Force, there are 10 characters that you could have on the field at the time. In Lord of the Rings, there's only six. So if you're doing a mission that has another character there, the summon won't pop up because there's a max of six characters. Now, to round out this squad, we have a leader in AON. We have Strider here. We also have two of the other Rohan attackers. The other character that I would recommend early on is Pippin. And Pippin is a... Decent character. He is a hobbit and kind of by default, he's the best 
light side early game healer in the game just because there's he's by default he's the only one there uh he has a few different moves here he has a heal healing uh squad for 500 health and 12 percent of this character's max health so as you start to build him the heal gets better and better also has a cleanse as you start to level this up so that is a good one as well he has this uh he's granting might for one turn to three random squad members might as you recall is kind of like offense up so giving him more uh, more offense more damage that they could do and regeneration for herself and also gives it to a random ally if mary is on the field mary is going to be a late game farm so you're not going to be able to use them so but this is the squad that i would take the arena as you start to build these characters as you get access to other characters and building other characters then i would shift to this next squad but again early game squad is the rohan characters the three rohan characters strider for his crits and then pippin for his heals but as you start to unlock some other characters, I would shift to them. And the leadership that I'm leaning into right now is these Isengard Orcs. The leader of the Isengard Orcs is Ugluck, and his leadership ability is giving some healing every time an Isengard member afflicts a bane or a negative effect on the enemies. You're gonna he's gonna heal two and a half percent of each of the other characters max health. So not it's not based on Uglux max health, based on the other characters max health. This is a very strong passive and this is where I started to lean into more of these Isengard orcs. All right so he also has provoke which is kind of like that taunt and he has a chance to get a couple stacks of that. His uh, special here is a afflicting blind to the enemy. So this is a great opening move, especially if you're facing uh, enemy striders there. Strider normally opens with an AOE attack. This blinds and stops that. His ultimate is getting disabled, which is kind of like that ability block there and uh, defense up for them. So Marhur is also going to work with Ugluck there. And Malhur is the next character that I want to talk about. Now, Malhur is available very, very early on in the light side missions, the one chapter one, two. So you can farm this character very, very early on. And he synergizes very, very good with Ugluck, the leader of this. And Ugluck, he's available in a guild campaigns very early on, one, one. The first chapter you're going to lock in the guild campaign. So very easy farm for both of these characters this special here i'm not a huge fan of it gives him regeneration gives him deadly which is going to give the crit chance up and haste the speed up so it gives him a lot of bonuses here and i think when you get to level four and you're increasing the turn meter you're going to be able to do this big move this is his big ultimate this is his big damaging move damaging over 210 damage afflicting uh getting slow on the enemies and ugluck is also going to assist so they work very well together ugluck has a move that malhur assists on and malhur has this move that ugluck assists on so they assist each other there and uh, he's having more crit chance and more damage on his basic so good character there and has a synergy with the rest of the eisenhard orcs last but not least Isengard orc that you're going to get very early on is this character Dunhar and he's the healer of the team you don't want you want some healing in arena uh, you don't want to just set these characters out there and hope they survive all the damage that your enemies are inflicting on you you want them to be able to heal up and get that survivability he has a bleed on his basic he has a heal block on his special here it's the damage increasing as you start to level this up and this is the heal heal the most wounded member for 500 health and 12% of this character's max health inflict weaken on two enemies. And weaken is kind of like an offense down. Their damage is going to be reduced. So uh, they're not going to do as much damage. Now, the good thing about his passive here is as you start to level this up, he's going to get more max health, which is what that healing is based on. That 12% healing comes from his max health. So good, good passive here. This These three go very well together. Now, to round out the other two characters, well, this is going to be a character that you're going to get very early on you're gonna get access to this character very early on you could farm him on the guild chapters the guild campaigns one seven and this is ironhide now he is a 180 shard unlock so it's gonna take a little while to farm this character and get him up but once you get him up this is a, this is one of the best arena characters in the game right now if we look at his moves he has a special that is an aoe attack he has a uh ultimate that is an AOE attack and you're getting more damage for each Mordor ally you're not gonna have any Mordor allies right now those are more of a mid game type team but early on you're gonna get uh two big AOEs this spell this is very good for enemy Eothanes that are taunting you can remove that taunt or Halbrads or anybody else is taunting you can remove that taunt with this special here and he has some decent damage there with the basic but very very good character this is the fourth character I had to take in 
And last but not least, you got a few different options for who you want to bring in. Now, one option is Morza, who on his own is not that great of a character, but inside of Isengard Orc Squad, he works very well, especially if you have that Ugg Luck leadership ability. Anytime you're applying a Bane or a negative ability onto enemies, you're going to get some healing. So he has a negative ability, weak minded for one turn. This is going to reduce the resistance. He's going to have, he's going to dispel two negative, two positive effects from the enemies and then inflict Disrupted, which is a negative effect. And he's also going to get an Isengard ally to assist. So not great on its own, but because you're inflicting negative abilities on enemies, you're going to get that healing as well. You're going to get some uh, dispels and you're going to get an assist from Isengard ally. And his ultimate here is boon on one enemy target, a random target getting exposed for two turns, exposes armor reduction, haste is a speed increase. Uh, so anytime you dispel gonna inflict expose and grant haste for random squad members so this is gonna be good you're gonna gain more speed for your team and he's a great character but i don't use him in arena yet because he's kind of a mid-game farm you're gonna need to wait about a week and a half or so to get access to this character but uh yeah he's only one star so i'm not bringing him into arena yet that is one of my thoughts that I'm going to bring in Arena. The character that I'm currently using as the fifth member is not a Shadow Squad member. It is Eothane that we talked about, the tank of the team. So let's go take these five characters into Arena right now and show you how I do battle with them. Let's pick a decent Arena team that we could possibly win. We don't have a lot of good targets here. All we have are big punch-ups. We've been punching up pretty big in Arena over the past couple of days. And our characters, we just don't have the resources to build them up a little bit more. But hopefully, we we could win this battle but if not at least you can see how this team does in action and see some of the strategy behind this team and this is probably the least punch up this 8500 and if we look at this setup right here there's no leadership ability this person has set this to leadership ability with aowen this person has not and this person has not either so pay attention to that when you're going through your arena matches but let's go in here and choose our squad right now we have the leader here in ugluck we have the rest of the orcs we have ironhide here and we have eothene as the tank let's go into battle here and see if we could punch up enough and beat this team all right here we go so we have their uh ironhide going first let's blind their strider strider normally opens with the aoe attack and he does get blind. That is good. He misses the AoE attack. Let's continue to work on Strider with the heal block. Now, it's very important. They are going to taunt. We're going to taunt. The other thing that it does is it's going to give us turn meter. And it's going to be dispelled by Iron Hide there. So, we have that. We're going to do our Foul Liquor to give our haste, to give our damage up. There's their Eothane giving some energy. Uh, they our, our taunt gets cleared. And we're going to clear their taunt as well uh oh it does not clear all right this is this is going to be a very tricky battle this is not what we wanted our iron hide does not have enough uh focus to remove the the taunt there all right it's finally removed from Eothene. let's go after strider now he is a threat to us we got our heal and that is why i like mauhur in this battle actually dunhar in this battle let's go with a aoe attack attacking everybody we have a second taunt there from Wubiti. And there's the second AoE attack. Everybody attacks him, and we cannot hit the enemy Strider there. That's what we want to take out. All right, we get that dispelled. Now we can keep working on Strider. He's in the red, but he is. Uh, they are winning right now. It is a big punch up that we're trying. So hopefully we can continue to win this. Uh, Strider has the bleeds, and we have our healer almost dead. Let's see if we can kill their Strider. Right away. We get the first kill of the match. They're ahead though, so even though we got the first kill, I don't think we're too far ahead right now. We're gonna work on Lady Eowyn right now. She could be a pain with all the counters and things that she adds to the battle, so we're gonna go work on her. And hopefully we can get, oh, there goes one of our targets. Here's our second AO attack from our big iron hide. It's not enough to throw anybody into the red. Can we kill their, their lady Eowyn we got her into the red she still has a bunch of defense ups though uh now she has that expose and we should get the kill here from a basic yes we do okay we get we were able to save that uh special there now let's go work on Ironhide. He still has those AO attacks that are coming back around very quickly, so we don't want to mess with them. But we have a taunt that we have to get through. Uh, luckily, uh, the Aeothane on their side got blinded. Let's get a big taunt here, giving us some turn meter. And here's a big AO attack. Could take out two of our members. It does, unfortunately. 
All right, so let's go and see if we can clear that. Does not get the clear. Let's see if we could get uh, the provoke is gone from Aothane. Are we going to be able to beat these guys? I don't think we're going to get the win here, but let's continue to fight this out and see if we could manage to pull off a victory here. We are getting an AoE attack again. We're getting some counters. Will it matter though? Our Iron Hide is still alive. Oh, not for long. And almost done there. Just a little too big of a punch up. So we didn't win that battle. I think it was a little too much of a punch up, but I think the strategy still holds. I think those are great characters. And maybe if we're not punching up enough as much as we were, maybe you could win this battle as well. But I think the orcs are gonna be the best arena team, at least for right now, at least until you unlock some other characters. There's some other characters that are pretty good, like Halbrad, but he's more of a later game character unless you buy that character. He has an awesome leadership ability for the Rangers. And down the road, you may wanna consider looking into the Mordor or I don't have them unlocked yet, but their kits look very, very strong, and I think they're really pretty dominant in arena. So that is it for this video, guys. Hopefully, this video helps you in deciding what is the arena team that you want to build, and hopefully, it helps you building the correct arena team so that you're not wasting resources on bad characters. But if it did help you, hit that like button. It does help that YouTube algorithm. Check out some of the other videos on this channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully, you have a great rest of your day. Hulk, this bump, Valley, flying out.